Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander and this is A Dish About the Dish Happy Hour where we are cruising through 1200 plus cocktail recipes in the International Bartender's Guidebook, copyright night. And today is a one drink video today because this is, this is kind of a crazy cocktail starting with the name. This is the Alfonso Cocktail. Not to be confused with the Alfonso Special I did a little bit a while ago, 1996. The Alfonso cocktail is named after the exiled King of Spain from the early 1900s, King Alfonso XIII, who apparently was a playboy, mismanaged uh, pretty much everything, and even included funding, unknowingly, funding his own ousting. Uh. So when he ended up in Paris, apparently the bartender felt bad for him and came up with this drink. Now why this specific drink? I don't know. But uh, there's an interesting ingredient in this one, which is Dubonnet, which is a new to me liquor and doing some research on the good old interwebs. Apparently Dubonnet came about in 1846 uh, from a certain Joseph, Joseph Dubonnet, who took basically it's a fortified wine, wine, herbs, and spices, and apparently quinine. I guess the government offered a contest to try to come up with a drink that would make the soldiers take more quinine in their diets. I guess they were going off to conquer places they shouldn't have been in South America and Africa. Side note, but anywho, so this is Dubonnet, which I have, I'm not very quite familiar with. Um, you know, it smells like, it smells like wine. It kind of smells like a, it smells like a lighter Cabernet. I'm not a Cabernet fan. It's a little too chewy, chewy for me. Uh, so if I were to drink a red wine, which is rare, I tend to go for like more like a Syrah. It's a little bit lighter or Merlot. And you have to say it that way. Merlot. But it's um it smells fruity. Tastes a little fruity too. It kind of reminds me of like the wine version of Southern Comfort. And if you saw my last Southern Comfort video, you know I enjoyed that greatly. So Let's get down to it. I'm gonna grab my chilled glass and we'll put these few ingredients together and see what we get. Right, so we start with our chilled champagne flute. This is the closest to a champagne flute that I have. We're gonna add in our sugar cube and then it says we're going to douse our sugar cube with two dashes of bitter, so you know that means whatever you feel like. Um, I've seen where you either dash the sugar cube first and then drop it in. I'm just gonna, uh, do it in the same glass so I don't get sugar and bitters everywhere. Ooh, there we go. Doused a sugar cube. And then to this, we're gonna add an ounce of our Dubonnet. <laughs> Try to pour that in there without splooshing everywhere. Now you know this is gonna take a long time to dissolve, so I don't think you're waiting for it to dissolve fully before consuming. We add our ice cubes, one more for good measure, and then we're going to top with our so champagne. I'm using La Marca because I enjoy more Prosecco than champagne. I don't know what it's about champagne, but it tends to hurt my head. And it's just me, hence the tiny bottle. Let's not pop open a big one for just me. Okay. Ooh, ah, ooh. We'll get it to the top. Then we're going to add our twist of a lemon. You know that means get a little essence in there first. Rim the glass a smidge. Top it off like that. Ta-da! And here we have our Alfonso cocktail. So I'm expecting to taste a lot of the La Marca before I taste any of the Dubonnet, but let's give it a whirl.
And yes, that's a lot of the marka, which is always refreshing. Let's see if I can give it a swirl a bit. And... No, I'm not gonna stick my finger in it. So it is rather refreshing. I'm not sure what I, all I taste is the sparkling wine right now, and I don't wanna guzzle it to get to the Dubonnet. And I've seen it where it's kind of mixed a little bit more. But I like the two-tone color of it by itself. Okay, there we go. Now we get a little bit of that cherry and that herb to it. So this is actually quite lovely. Um, it's not sweet at all. It's not bitter. Because I've used the sparkling wine over champagne, I think it's not as thick and cloying as sometimes champagne can be. This is considered an old cocktail because nobody makes it anymore, and I'm wondering if it's because just very few bars will stock Dubonnet. But if they have it, give it a try because it's actually really quite lovely and refreshing, and it is an aperitif. So I can't remember if that makes you hungry or suppresses your appetite. I'll have to look that up one day too. But it's, um, this is rather delightful. I think I would have this one again. So if you've had the Dubonnet before, let me know what you think. Put a little drop down in the comments below. And if you have any other tips or tricks to, or something else to use Dubonnet with, you know, I've got 1900 and I got a lot of recipes to go. So maybe we'll find it again. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, so thank you so much for spending time with me. If you haven't already, hit like and subscribe because you know the drill. It helps the channel be seen by other people because I would love to share more cocktails with you and hear what you think. So thank you so much for spending time with me today and until next time, y'all.